Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into the Polygon add-on. We're going to look at how to search for assets, how to use materials, models, HDRs, and brushes, and explore all the various features and preferences settings. Okay, so we're gonna start with searching. So let's bring up the side panel by pressing N, and then I'll just jump down to the Polygon tab, and that'll bring up our add-on. Uh, let's make this a little wider so we can see what we're doing. In fact, we'll go three wide, there we go. Okay, so the easiest way to search, funnily enough, is using the search bar. So if I type in something like uh, ground, we'll start to see our ground materials, and then we can use the uh, pages to see through all the various results. Now there is a setting in uh, preferences where we can choose how many assets are displayed per page. So let's change that to 10, just to take a look you'll see now 10 are displayed, like so. Cool. Now, the um, other way to search is to browse by category. So let's get rid of the ground prompt. And instead, I'm going to click here where it says All Assets. And I'm going to limit the search to Textures. And then we get a new um, category dropdown. So let's take a look at uh, Marble, for example. And now we get to see all the marble. Uh, textures and just like before you can cycle through all the various pages as needed but we also can narrow it down further because on this particular category there's a subcategory so marble and then slabs and now we see uh, materials that are perfect for marble slabs so plenty of ways to search okay so back where we started now um, when browsing for assets there's a few things we can do to make the, the searching process a little more friendly. So let me just bring in a plane for a moment. I'll just scale it up. Maybe bring this bit down to two panels so we can split the screen a bit. There we go. So with a object selected, you'll notice that this little eye icon um, begins to be clickable. And what this does is allow you to preview various materials. So um, let me just filter this by ground. Since we're working on a plane, may as well do a ground. I do like my grounds. Um, and then click one of these eyes. And then we'll just jump over to material preview mode. And you see a, a low resolution and watermarked version of that material has been applied. But this allows you to very quickly have a quick uh, feel for what a material is going to look like in your scene. Um, easily enough to be able to decide if it's the the material that you want to purchase or not. So let's just have a little look through. So maybe I want to use that one. So maybe I've narrowed it down and I'm, I'm fairly confident that that's the one, but because it's low resolution, it's still kind of hard to tell. Um, like if you were doing a close up shot, it's hard to know if that's really gonna be the sort of thing you're after. So another, an, another uh, option is to view our larger thumbnail. That will open up a new window and I'll just drag this out and zoom a little bit. And now you can ins inspect the rendered preview nice and high resolution um, so you can see how much detail is in there and if it's gonna be suitable for your scene. And that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for searching. Okay, so next we're gonna focus on importing and configuring a material. So let's jump over to our various grounds. Now, if I click on this icon, um, this first one, this polygon one that's by default, that, that will search the entire polygon library. This one will show me just my purchase assets, and I can filter that by ground as well. Um, and you'll see here, some say apply, which means I've already downloaded um, at least one resolution of that material. And some will say downloaded, that means I've purchased them, but they're just not uh, downloaded into the add-on yet. And I can rectify that by hitting download. Now, when I'm downloading, I also have the choice to click on this little drop down and that will let me choose the resolution. So rather than the 4K default, I could pick 8K or 1K or whatever I want. But I'm gonna to stick to 4K for now and let's bring in this material, go. So that's been applied to the plane. You'll notice that it no longer has the polygon low resolution watermarked version, it's the proper texture. And if I click on this box, show imported assets, that material is now located here, it's, or listed here, I should say. Um, and as we add more materials to our scene, we'd see all of the currently used assets here. So that's really handy for filtering between um, the whole library, ones you own, and ones you're currently using. 
Okay, let's take a look at how to make adjustments to a material. So I'm going to quickly apply this one because I also want to take a look at displacement in a moment. Um, but first, let's just apply it. Cool. So there's our uh, imported material. Okay. Now, there's two ways to make adjustments to it. You can go to the shading tab, like so, and then zoom in on the... The, uh, the main node group for the material, and all of the possible adjustments that you might want to make are going to be here. So you can adjust the scale, you can move it about, um, you can affect the rotation, you can make uh, adjustments to the color, saturation, and value, you can do brightness and contrast adjustments, ambient occlusion, you can um, adjust the roughness, normals, displacement, everything you're going to need. But you can also reach all of these controls from the material panel here. So without even having to go into the shading tab, just go to the material panel, look under the base color, um, and then all of those same values are replicated here. So we can make whatever adjustments we want to make. The aspect ratio I'd leave alone. That is automatically adjusted by the add-on. Um, so if you import a material that isn't square, um, it will automatically adjust the aspect ratio so it appears correctly on your model. But of course, you can disable it by setting it back to one if you're doing kind of a, a custom UV layout. Um, and that's basically it for adjustments. It's 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 super easy. However, one thing that's really important with ground is displacement. And if I were to increase the displacement strength here to say I don't know one, that doesn't look right, does it? Now the reason is. Currently, there's nothing to displace. This plane is made up of four vertices. Um, so all, all displacement can do is move these vertices up and down. And that's really not going to give us the result we want. So what we need to do is subdivide this mesh. Now, you can do this manually. You can go to um, your render settings, set it to experimental, um, add in a subdivision modifier, and then make sure the material set to... Uh, accept displacement and increase the amount and it, it should look fine. However, that's a lot of steps. We don't like lots of steps. We like nice and simple. So instead, let's go back to our add-on and go to the preferences menu. And what I'm going to do is right down the bottom here, I'm going to select this use micro displacements if available enables experimental. Okay. So with that applied, if I were to get a different material, I'm not going to load the same one because we've already loaded it and, uh, I don't think that will work at that point. Um, we're going to grab this material now, okay? And I'll apply that instead. Okay, so now that's been applied. And you'll notice it's added a subdivision modifier. And if I jump to here, it's put it in experimental mode. So it's done those steps for you. So all I have to do, close the add-on again, is move down to displacement and increase it. There we go. And we've got displacement, and it's working exactly as it should. Awesome. Importing models is, if anything, even simpler. Um, let's just head over to my owned assets and I'll take a look at models and then furniture. And I've already downloaded this chair here. Now, the way this works, when you click import, it will place it wherever the 3D cursor is. So I'm just going to leave that in the middle of the scene, hit import. And there we go, the chair's been imported. And then from there, I can just grab it and move it to wherever I need it to go in the scene. Uh, for certain models, you might find that there's a couple of separate objects parented to an empty, like in the case of rocks, I believe. So let me just quickly download, say, this set. Okay, now that's downloaded, I'll just hit import, and you'll see that it's imported the rocks. Now. I'm just going to close down the add-on and take a closer look here. Now, if I click on it, you'll notice that this is technically an empty, and all it's doing is referencing the actual models. Um, this is, this is uh, basically for performance, so um, it makes sure you're not duplicating objects unnecessarily and whatnot. But if you need to actually get to the individual objects, you can do that. Let's just disable visibility of the rocks, for example. Go into the desert collection here, the Stones Desert Collection, that's the ones I just downloaded, and then you have access to the actual models. But by default, they'll be uh, disabled um, within a 
category called polygon models. You can see the armchairs in there too. And the actual objects that you see are just a referenced empty. So do bear that in mind. Um, for normal use case, it's perfectly fine. Just download, move it around, and you're good to go. But if you do need to actually make some changes, maybe you're going to be creating a scattering setup or whatnot, then it's, you do need to bear that in mind. Okay, so I've loaded in a little uh, demonstration scene here so we can uh, take a look at how to import HDR lighting. So let's open up the add-on again. And I've actually already got it filtered by HDR, so let's just set that back to default. So yeah, what you do is click on all assets, go to HDRs, and then you can search for a specific um, keyword if you want, or just browse through them. I'm going to do the latter. Just, just uh, limit this to environments. Now let's pick out one that looks good, or even better, one that I've already purchased would be nice. Aha! This one I've already purchased and downloaded, so we'll import that just by clicking on import. In fact, before I do that, it's also worth noting, uh, again, it's, it downloads in a resolution of 4K, but you can increase that to, uh, or decrease that to, to any uh, resolution that you want. So let's import the map there. And if I jump over to rendered mode, you'll see, we can see our scene. Now on this particular setup, I've disabled the uh, background, so I'm just turn that back on. And there, you can now see our HDR and the, the lighting from it, and it looks lovely. Okay, so to configure um, how the HDR is displayed, like the rotation and whatnot, we can go over to our shading panel. Just give ourselves some room here, and go to world view. Excellent. So we have our, let me just zoom in here a bit. Um, it's imported two materials here. The, uh, or two textures, sorry, the, the HDR itself and a background. Um, and then they're being inputted uh, manually into the shading setup there. Now, um, to rotate the HDR, you can, but by default anyway, they, the controls are separated. So I can move the lighting around by changing the Z rotation like that, or um, I can move the background around like so, if I wanted it to be slightly different. Or the easier option sometimes is just to reconnect the lighting um, mapping node to both, and then the rotation will match. Um, the, the the lighting rotation will match the background. And yeah, that's pretty much it with HDRs, nice and simple. Okay, so uh, for the last asset type, brushes, um, I've set up a simple, uh, heavily subdivided sphere that's perfect for sculpting on, and we'll switch over to the Sculpting tab. So with the, the add-on open, let's go to All Assets, and then uh, Brushes, and then we'll limit the choice to, say, Rocks, and then we have all the available rock brushes listed here. And I've actually already downloaded this one, so let's just hit import, and there we go. Now, in terms of configuring the brush, it's literally exactly the same as any other brush that you've ever used. So, uh, but let's switch over to Anchored, and yeah, we're pretty much good to get going. Done. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to become quickly apparent that I'm not the best sculptor out there, but yeah, super easy to import a brush and get using it. So that pretty much covers all of the different asset types. All I want to do now is take one little look at the, um, the preferences window in more detail, just to explain what everything does. Yep, saving the most boring part for last, because why not? So I'm just going to click there, the little... Uh, cog icon in the add-on, and that brings up the user preferences panel um, directly on the add-on, which is really handy. So we already spoke about the library. That's the, let me just make this a little bigger, so we're focusing on it. Cool. Uh, so that's the where the um, add-on has downloaded the assets that we've been using during this video, um, and that, yeah, they'll always be stored there. Awesome. However, you might have additional folders. Perhaps you've been using Polygon for years, and you've already downloaded loads of materials and you don't want to do all of that again and you don't need to you can just go to add additional directory and then if i go to where did i keep mine let's go to my nas drive polygon assets old and add that 
it's now added that as an additional um, library and it will reference those so those uh, any textures you've you've got in there will appear in your uh, owned assets and it will appear as downloaded now you can tell it's slowing down a little bit while it's accessing all those new files but yeah um, that's how you add an extra library Cool. Um, then you've got display preferences, assets per page. That's just the amount of previews you get per page. So you can choose anywhere up to 20 or as low as 6. Um, if you've got like a slow internet connection, then maybe dropping down to 6 will will make the experience a bit smoother. If you want to see loads of stuff at once, then maybe you want to put it up to 20. But this is where you would set that. Then you have asset preferences. This is where you set the default resolution. You've noticed that everything we've done so far has been downloaded in 4K, and that's because I've got this set here. So whatever you set these to will be the default. You can still manually change them per asset as you're downloading them, um, but the default will be defined here. And there's a separate default for texture and for models. Um, and then we have the same down here for HDRs and brushes. So you can configure them exactly as needed. Um, it looks like on HDR, the, the default for the background is actually 8K, um, which is interesting. But cool. The um, you, you also have a section on the LOD here, the level of detail. Basically, our models come with... Um, lower resolution versions like if you you'd use a lot four for example on tiny background items that you can barely see and you might use the the source for something up really close um but you can you can choose that here and again you can you can uh, specify that on a per model basis this is just the defaults cool so below that we have purchase preferences auto download assets on purchase that's self-explanatory if you turn that off you'll have to hit purchase and then hit download um, which might be how you want to work, but by default that's set to on. Um, after that you have import preferences, use micro displacements, we've, we've spoke about that. I personally love leaving that on. And you have use 16-bit maps. This is in relation to the displacement and normal maps, and I think that's it. Maybe maybe a few of the bump maps, but we, we um, on all of our 16 on all of our materials that have 16-bit maps, we also include an 8-bit variant. Um, they're primarily useful for game engines, um, though if you're an EV user, uh, you might uh, find better performance by disabling that and using the 8-bit maps. But if it's an option, I would stick with the 16-bit ones. Below that, we can check for updates. I'll click on that now. Do we have an update? No, we don't. So, yeah, the, the add-on's up to date. Um, and then a couple of extra options, uh, log into console, blah, blah, blah. You, you can ignore that stuff. And you also have links to our terms and conditions and the privacy policy. So that pretty much rounds up the video. Um, if you have any questions or if you're unclear how to use any part of this add-on, please contact us through customer support. Um, you, you'll most likely get uh, sent directly to me and I'm more than happy to help, as is anyone else. And if you're interested in more tutorials to, uh, relating to Blender, we have a new channel called Polygon Blender. Jump over to there and hit subscribe um, and expect some more content soon in the future.